So uh, let's open it up. Uh, anybody have any uh, questions on the Rack Canada or, uh, Canada Winter Contest? It, uh, we don't want to get it confused with Canada Day. Canada Day is in July, of course, and this is the Canada Winter. Same type of setup as Igor said, but uh, uh, only colder. Only colder, yeah. And the the only thing, uh, Igor, and you got my email, and uh, Igor has a proposal to. Uh, uh, to work up there for a couple hours and that uh, with it. Uh, uh, any of you that have been here on Manitoulin, and it's a, it's a day-to-day -day, uh, predicament um, whether we can get up on that hill. It's one of the few areas that's plowed because we're right on the escarpment plateau there. And mm -hmm. um, it uh, the wind that blows, as many of you know, that's why they put 49 windmills up there on that escarpment because there's always a predominant west wind that blows up on the hill it uh, it could be as still as a as anything down at my uh, location here below the hill but up there oh my god it's like you're in a, a wind tunnel it's uh, it's it's kind of crazy and just to give you a perception igor of mm -hmm. what we could possibly, like you said, you've got that uh, Ford Explorer uh, de-expedition or uh, expedition, which is great four-wheel drive that can take you just about uh, through anything. If I could get uh, share, uh, if I could get you just to sh stop sharing for a second there, Igor. Um, I just uh, want to show some pictures up there that we took around the winter time. Um, that could possibly happen now i'm not say uh, saying it's going to happen but there's always a probability so uh, let's take a look uh, first of all let me just bring this up here come on okay so what tends to happen sometimes um now we're not necessarily going to get into the shed but uh, were you thinking of working through uh, inside your vehicle with the 2000 or did you want to work in the building there, uh, uh, Igor? Uh, I'm planning to operate from the uh, vehicle okay. uh, and uh, all what I need only to take electricity from the, uh, from the shed. Just... Yeah, yeah, that's it, not it a problem. Just... We can run a cord out to your car with it. The only the only reason I say that uh, uh, we went up there, we had to fix the repeater one winter, and uh, uh, we took a trek up the hill. Um, Craig uh, Timmermans with the CFRM uh, radio station up there, and his wife Kelly. So she came up with me uh, to go there. Anyway, we arrived up at the. Uh, up at the site there and uh, we walked uh, yeah can I get you to just stop sharing uh, yeah, yeah there, please uh, yeah, yeah sure for a minute okay perfect thank you very much all right let me try this again and uh, we walked to the uh, shed and this is what we can expect because the snow builds up and slides off the metal roof of the repeater shack so as you can see there we couldn't open the door to get into the building at all because the uh, the snow was just completely and it was, <laughs> I'll tell you. And when we walked up there, we didn't take shovels with us. So we had an old mast there that uh, Kelly's on top of the snowbank. I'm taking the picture. And of hmm. course, the, the doors open outwards, right? So everything was frozen. It was solid. It was like uh, hitting cement there with it. So that wasn't the biggest uh, problem. Uh, let me just uh, stop sharing for a second. The other issue that we can uh, that we can experience uh, with this is the um, is trying to uh, okay. Let me just get out of here for a minute, and I'm going to go to this one next is trying to drive down the road to the tower site okay you can't get up the hill um on mclean's mountain because that is totally socked in if it, we get snow and what happens is it melts and then it freezes again 
and uh, with that it makes it very very difficult and there's no way you can drive up there as uh, when I was with the OPP if I had a quarter for every time I got uh, dispatched to the hill there because somebody tried to get up the hill got halfway up and then the traction was gone because it was solid ice and mm -hmm. they slid backwards and next thing you know the uh, the vehicles in the ditch or they're coming down the other way and they're slowly creeping down the hill but as gravity picks up they go faster and faster try to put the brakes on next thing you know the vehicle's spinning and they can't make that 90 degree turn at the bottom of the hill and they end up on the roof and that so uh, but here um, just let me show you this here go here uh, where are we here we go this is what can happen because there is a fence line up on McLean's Mountain Road up there and this is the snow that can build up that's yep. the road uh, that's the road mm. going to the tower site the tower yep. site as you can see is here and that snow is 10 15 feet deep and yeah, they don't yeah, plow definitely. it there yeah you know so i mean that's the issue i mean if we could get like a couple of snow machines with sleds and stuff like that but it means hauling up there and uh, that so this is just what i wanted to uh, kind of bring to your attention the possibility now yep. i've been up there at christmas being able to drive right to the building because mm -hmm. we haven't had any snow mm -hmm. so it's every year it's uh, it's debatable on uh, what happens and uh, you know i mean you can uh, you can see that uh, and that's you know, coming from that's coming from the green bush Road. Yeah, that's the yeah. only way to get up there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Greenbush only. Yeah. Yeah, the Greenbush Road uh, and that with it. Um, one year, uh, you know, here here's a little better picture. Uh, let me just uh, go here. I'll stop sharing and go up here. It's it's really uh, unpredictable, but uh, like I said. There's the uh, the tower. This is our tower here, and you can see the snow banks. There's a, a rail fence line that runs on each side, and when that wind blows, it just scoops in there on the top of the hill, and it's just, like I said, and they don't plow it. Now, with the windmills up there, there was one year where they brought in those big V plows, uh, and that to try and mm -hmm. move mm -hmm. the snow. Uh, let me see if I've got a picture of that uh, picture. Yeah. So Jeff and I uh, went up there and they started to uh, plow. Mm -hmm. And this is what it uh, looks like here. Um, if, if they do that. Now, whether or not they do that, we can't always uh, commit to that. But uh, anyway... Uh, this is what the, uh, no, that's not the picture. Where is it? Do, do, do. Uh, did I not get it up here? No, where's the other picture? Okay, let me try show all windows there. This may be the picture here. Nope. That's not it. Okay. We got it set up in file details or list or, or well, do you I've have it in, in yeah. small small pictures and yeah, you got medium it. size, yeah. You got it. Um and that with it. So uh let me go here. And this is the picture here. Nope. This is the picture here. I have a question. Yep. Uh, the VA3 rack multiplier, uh, is, is someone still going to be out there using that call sign, or, or is that not being used at all for winter? No, it, it can be used uh, any time. As director, uh, I'm responsible for uh, the administration of the... Uh, the call sign in the uh, province along with the southern director 
And usually it's a first come first serve basis with it. Okay, uh, the, the VA3 RAC call sign can be used by any individual or any club or group that wishes to use it. All they have to do is they have to uh, submit a log afterwards and it has to be supplied to RAC um, after the uh, contest uh, as, uh, as such with it. But if uh, you put in a, a request, Frank, that uh, you would like to personally use it and nobody else has come before you, then that can be assigned to you uh, that way. So it means like if you have uh, uh, to get a very good uh, possibility to, uh, for the pileups in the REC Canada Day Contest, uh, you can submit your application to the REC director to AL and to uh, V3 Quebec Radio Phil. And if nobody uh, requested this call, this is very good probability to get it. And this is definitely will be beneficial to operation if you don't have such experience. So it will be better to try. Well, yeah. I don't. I don't have enough experience there uh, yet, Igor. I'm working on it, uh, but uh, no, I wouldn't take it. But uh, maybe somebody in the, in the uh, Ontario Contest Club might uh, take it because I hear there's quite a few uh, good contesters in that group. You can try it any time. This is like mm -hmm. uh, uh, like possibility. You might be, might and, not more than you can chew. Yeah, and also <laughs> this is. Uh, very good practice, like to operate uh, like 5.9 Ontario. So this is not too difficult. And this is big fun because everybody will hunt in for you. Yeah. So. Okay, this is the picture that I wanted to show. They were <laughs> able to uh, make a path, but the snow banks were higher than the truck. And when we got, Jeff and I got down so far, I was His, there for one ride. The mirrors were scraping the walls there. Yeah, that, wow. exactly. Um, with it, and we finally got to a point where the plow couldn't remove the snow anymore. And that uh, with it, we're quite a distance from the towers uh, at that point. It was like point. being in a submarine. Uh, did, yep. did you have to back up all the way back? Yes, after? yep. Oh, absolutely. Holy crap. Yeah, we yeah. got down so far and uh, yeah, there's no way to turn around. You're literally, you couldn't even open the doors of the uh, of <laughs> the vehicle because the snowbank and you can see the height uh, yeah. in this mm -hmm. picture. It was just, and that's what happens. It blows and it fills up there. And this is the last area on Manitoulin. And I know because I've traveled every back nook and cranny 35 years as policing. And this is the last area that melts on mm. Manitoulin Island yeah. is up on that <laughs> that hill. So yeah. it's the first to fill in and the last to leave. It's uh, yeah. it's just it's because we're up on that high bluff and that yeah. that there. So it, it wasn't that I was trying to tell you, you know, discourage you there, uh, uh, Igor, because uh, I know you really want to get up to that site, but. You know, if you and I will be able to tell you weeks leading up. So, yeah. you know, having said that, you are welcome to mm -hmm. use the shack here. I do have a 13 element uh, uh, Kirschcraft beam, uh, two meters that is up 60 feet on the tower. So, uh, I mean, I'm not as high as McLean's Mountain. I'm about 800 feet lower, but we're still in the same grid square. And, uh, you know, if you want to try and I've been able to hit most of the amateurs that are on the page here uh, from Elliott Lake to Sudbury and that direct so but um, we'll see we hope to get up the hill I do have Ted on board uh, via uh, VA3 uh, OGG uh, or uh, VA3 CTE here as he's got and Ted does have a skidoo and he has offered uh, to uh, that if it's required anyway i'll turn it over to you ted if uh, there's any suggestions now you've seen the the sites up there uh, uh can your machine make it do you think oh it looks like a lot of fun actually <laughs> it looks like a a, a a snow machine playground <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I would definitely uh, have fun going up and down there for sure. Uh, no problem with the snow machine, I don't think, you know. Um, we have two here, so uh, we'll, we'll uh, certainly available for uh, if, if needed. Like yeah. climbing a ski hill. Yeah. 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 They'll need a trailer. I mean, yeah, yeah, if you're on top right. of it, it's it's not a problem. The only uh, the only issue, uh, mm -hmm. the other issue is uh, at the tower site, we're only plugged into one 15 amp circuit that we have off uh, the hydro up there, yep. and uh, I I mean it won't be a problem to plug his uh, his radio in to run 100 watts on yeah, two meters yeah, that's true. from it, but uh, heat is another issue up there if we were to plug in a couple of space if heaters, he's going to be in uh, if he's going to be in his vehicle then uh, yeah but know, if we can't get the vehicle up there rusty right oh yeah if you got to go snow mm. machine, that's right so that's if it. he's yeah. able to transmit off the spare uh, building that we use for storage there which is empty mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. where he operated from mm -hmm. um, it's not a problem he's out of the wind but if mm -hmm. it's 30 below out there it's going to be 20 uh 29 below or 31 below in the uh, in the uh, building, the building. Right? so yeah. to operate two or three hours up there you better bring your arctic parka there because it's uh, yeah i do have experience with uh, traveling to arctic usually usually i have been using a uh, couple layers of the mm -hmm. thermal uh, weather uh, uh, and so and if you're only beer, looking from yeah. seven to nine Originally, I thought you were going to be right from 7 p.m. Yeah. on Friday night to 7 p.m. Saturday night. Um, I think a little bit closer to the contest, it will be more realistic to see what is yeah, the possibility. Yeah. Uh, but uh, like uh, for the beginning, uh, contest will start at 7 p.m. So I think mostly uh, big uh, possibility to make contacts will be from 7 to 9, maybe to 10 p.m. And after that, like no reason to stay on the top of the hill whole night. So better to come back to uh, the, to your home and uh, come back to uh, top of the mountain on the Saturday morning around 8 p.m. when uh, it will be possible to continue to operate in the contest. So this is the plan and I'm very thankful for your kind proposal to stay at uh, yeah. I've got a Home. suggestion, uh, guys. Yep. A nice fishing shack would really work well for that situation because a small uh, propane heater will keep you quite toasty, as Vic probably can mm. attest. Uh, when we were out ice fishing, you could take your coat right off with uh, with a small heater, just a small propane bottle, and uh, the the heater that goes right on the top of that, and you're toasty. It you know, would be the best way to do it. Mm. Interesting. How it possible to to bring to to the top well i don't have one but i'm sure somebody in the in the crew has one i don't know whether vic still has his or not mm -hmm. i see okay great well idea. i mean uh, yeah the um the i never thought of a propane heater i mean um just have to remember building about well so. you've been up to the hill you know what the uh, the building is like yeah i mean it's empty and it's oh. shielded i mean if he shuts yeah. the door Mm -hmm. It should be okay in there as long as you let a yeah, little bit of air no, and in. Well, yeah, there is a there is on the wall there is a vent oh, that's okay. got mm -hmm. uh, flaps on it. Yeah, we're um, fine then. And that um, you can you even know, buy the uh, the units that uh, monitor this, the uh, uh, the the O2 levels and shut down if they go out of range. I think one of the the oh there what Mike's holding up what have you got there Mike. Muted. He's muted there. He's looking for the mute button. I know. <laughs> That's mm. a buddy heater. Mm. It uses two one pound bottles, but you can get the cable to uh, change it to a 20 pound bottle. And uh, it drives oh, me right out of the oh, little deer okay. shack. Yes, I got to get here first. Hi, right here. Bob, can you hear me? Hey. How's the little baby doing? Hang on, people. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I muted him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was thinking of the the one that you showed there, Mike. That's a good, very good one. Yeah, I never yeah. thought of that. So that is a possibility. Uh, yeah. 
um, you know, get a propane or borrow one from somebody uh, mm -hmm. for the weekend, and uh, you know that'll heat that building up, and uh, what? and then just Are you make a noise, the, uh, and that. Uh, uh, me... <laughs> Pat, can uh, we get you to mute? Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's doggy and grandkids and everything. There we go. So, but um, yeah. Um, so we will we will play it by ear, uh, Igor, and uh, okay. as we get sure. closer, it looks uh, it looks exciting anyway. Yeah, I see. And, and... It'd, it'd be nice to have an expert to uh, play with my radios too, so you can show me all about those uh, also. Hmm. So no we'll problem. have fun with that. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Any other questions for Igor yeah, about I that? Have questions, for Igor? Yeah, uh, please yeah. go ahead, uh, Denny. Um, first of all, the uh, the exchange you said Igor five nine zero n five nine is the RS number uh, that could change. Everybody's always five nine in a contest, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All I can hear them or not. Uh, no matter how you many times you ask them to repeat. That's right. Them. That's right. Everybody's <laughs> five nine. Um. Uh, another thing, the the multipliers. I'm I'm still not clear. Uh, is it the further uh, provinces, the harder to reach provinces are the ones that have the higher multiplier? Is that? No, no, I don't uh, think so. Like, um, okay, let me show to you a list of the multiplier I prepared the uh, for the. RC Canada Day contest. Uh, let me see one sec. Uh, all documents for the contest uh, I'll publish. Like I will ask uh, uh, Lou to publish on the. Yeah, it's here. On the website uh, of the Manitoulin uh, Radio Club uh, Facebook uh, page. And uh, let me show it to you. Uh, Oh, uh, can I share my screen? Okay. Okay. So, can you see it? Danny? Yeah, we see it. We see uh, it. Yeah, see, you're okay. coming through fine now. Go ahead. I see. Okay. Take a look. Maybe it will be, um, will be more uh, visible. This is table of multiplier in REC like it should be winter contest. Like this is malt, this is province, this is band. You can take two pages, one for the CW, another for the SSB. And if you take Victor Echo 2 on the uh, 40 meters, you can mark cross, uh, cross on, on this uh, uh, score, uh, on this place. And you will see which provinces you took already and which needs to be taken. Also, one, such, uh, one recommendation, uh, you, can, um, you can ask uh, everybody to QSY to the another band for the multiplier. For example, you took Victor Echo 4 on 40 meters. You can tell to Victor Echo 4, Victor Tokyo or Victor Echo 4 uh, Radio Alpha Charlie, can you operate on 80 meters frequency 3777 at, for example, 9 p.m.? Uh, ham radio operators mm, friendly, uh, and this is not big deal to make contact uh, on the another band. Uh, this is one from the uh, tactic which uh, I have been using during uh, contest because better to organize multiplier than uh, to catch possibility, maybe catch this multiplier later. If I'm working with rare station, for example, VK5 or Zulu Lima on the 20 meters, I'm asking, can you operate 15? Better to catch right now. Can you uh, QSY on the 15 now? And after that, like tell frequency 21, 200, for example, and uh, with big possibility, you will catch it. This is tactic. It means like you can connect, you can select uh, any stations from the any province uh, uh, work on the 40 meters, 20 meters, 15, but you 
will be not able for any reason to work on the 80 meters. If you will ask, can you QSY to the 80 meters? In this case, it's possibility to catch the multiplier. In this case, your multiplier will be higher and result also will be higher because this is not like passive probability to catch in multiplier. This is active, like you hunting for the multiplier. You creating uh, your own multiplier table according to the uh, cases which has been exist in the contest. Uh, this table of the multiplier will be uh, changed to the receive winter contest. I'll give to Lou and I'll ask to publish on the Facebook uh, money tooling page. Okay, okay. That, actually that was going to be my next question was uh, an operator on uh, on one frequency band. Uh, if you catch the same operator on a different band, that's not considered a duplicate then. Uh, that was going to be my next question, obviously. No, uh, it's uh, not like the sweepstakes contest. No, no, no. Dupe, it means like you operate same station on the same band, same mode. If you operate uh, VE3 RSE on 20 meters, definitely you can operate on the another bands. It will be not dupe. It will be extra points and possible extra mult. You see, for the uh, the Rack Canada Day contest, um, I was here in my shack, and um, Igor was up on the top of the hill, and we worked every band, okay, with various call signs. Like I can use my V3 AJB, I can use V3 EM call sign. I can use V3RII, I can use V3RXR, and I can use V3RQQ because my certificate has all those call signs under it. And I can work every band. So I worked 160, 80 meters, uh, right through 10, 6 meters, 2 meters, 440 with Igor up the hill. We weren't that far, but every contact he made with me so if you people are available for the winter day contest on two meters to be able to work direct to Igor either on the top of the hill or over to my QTH, then that will add his multipliers uh, for him uh, with it. And if you have another call sign that is under your name, use that too. Is that not correct, uh, Igor? Yeah, this is, will be very beneficial because uh... Uh, second call, this is this is what you, you do have, for example, uh, V3 MYK, uh, no, no, uh, Frank uh, V3 Alpha Charlie has called Victor Alpha 3 Fox Mike Mike. This is definitely a uh, good possibility to operate by another call. It will be extra QSO and uh, for the higher result, each QSO uh, will be countable. Like so, if uh, you have another call, uh, I would appreciate if you will call me by uh, your next call. This is beneficial. And also it's possible to operate uh, like in SSB, uh, in FM, uh, like CW as well. So any don't QSO. We, don't we all have the uh, ability to use the CG3 prefix um, or not? Like no, uh, no, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yet. Okay. It has to be issued by I said Canada for a, a special uh, okay. event. Okay. okay. Um, to be able, and they usually do a specific uh, uh, circumstance for time. As far as I know, and I've checked, there's nothing been issued for this winter uh, day contest as another prefix. Okay. But okay. if it was available, like what they yeah. did during the centennial year that you could use it all year long, then yeah. absolutely. So what you need to do is pull out your certificate of proficiency and look under your name to see what call signs that you have under your name. All right. The reason I've got so many is because I am repeaters. the trustee of all the repeater systems, but ultimately that is a call sign. If I wanted to turn and say, okay, V3 RQQ, clear, that's legal for me. Yeah. So Ted can use two call signs, but uh, some of the rest of us only have the one. <laughs> yeah. 
continue. Have to make a separate contact, or can you make one contact and say, "Oh, and use this call sign as well," or do you have to call again with the second call sign? Call you need again, to call I believe. You need yeah. to call again, and you need yeah. to send report. Yeah. Okay. 